Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Uranus. Not Uranus, because that's not really how you pronounce it. Also because of what we're going to be talking about and because I don't want you to make fun of this video. So yeah, we've discovered that apparently Uranus is creating a lot of really unusual gas clouds. And these gas clouds are generated in a very unusual way and suggest that this planet has actually lost a lot of mass over the last few billion years. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. And let's begin right here, a little bit of history. The year is 1986, January of 1986, and the Voyager 2 probe is about to approach Uranus and collect a lot of different data, including magnetic data, for the first time in history. Actually, for the only time in history. We haven't really been back in over 30 years. Uranus, being one of the stranger planets in our solar system, as you can see, is actually orbiting on the side. And this is not the only discovery we're going to be making here. We're also going to discover a lot of its moons. We're going to discover that it has rings, as you can see. They're kind of difficult to see in this simulation. But if I raise the brightness, you'll see them pretty easily. And we also discover a lot of other things. But there is one thing that we discovered that we didn't really know about yet. Mostly because it's not something we knew existed. And this something is known as plasmoid. So in a nutshell, if you were to kind of get the idea in a single picture, here is a plasmoid. We've discovered these around Earth, we've also discovered them pretty much around other planets as well, but the biggest ones we found so far were around Jupiter and Saturn. Both Juno and Cassini mission discovered really really large plasmoids, which are in a nutshell kind of like gas clouds of various material but usually hydrogen, ionized hydrogen, that slowly leaves the uh, planetary system and escapes into the rest of the solar system, most likely just becoming gas. But to try to understand what plasmoids are, we have to understand what magnetic reconnection is. Here's an example from the Sun. In a nutshell, magnetic lines that are formed around all magnetic objects including our Sun and our planet Earth, eventually will snap and try to reconnect, releasing a lot of energy, while at the same time causing some of the mass, and in the Sun's case it's actually the extremely energetic and extremely powerful um, solar wind, be released as a kind of a blob of ionized matter that travels across the solar system and sometimes collides with planets including planet Earth. And we usually refer to these as a magnetic storm. But not just Sun does that. Pretty much any object that has magnetic field will create very similar conditions and very similar phenomena, but on a much smaller scale. So for a planet Earth, when the magnetic line reconnect, it will also actually release some of our atmosphere as a kind of a tiny small plasmoid that will travel across the solar system. And really mostly because the magnetic line reconnection happens all the time. And the more magnetic field the planet has, the larger plasmoids it's going to form. Which in a nutshell are nothing more than really just big bubbles of gas that's trapped inside the magnetic field that slowly move away from the planet and probably collide with other stuff. But here's the thing though, we still really understand very little about these plasmoids because we discovered them not so long ago. And we've mostly seen them only around uh, Jupiter, Saturn and Earth. We know they exist around other planets, we just didn't get a chance to detect them uh, physically. And for example, this paper from 2015 discovered approximate mass of these bubbles for both Jupiter and Saturn, and most of the composition of these bubbles did not just come from Jupiter itself, but also from various moons, like for example Io that does have a tendency to create rings around Jupiter, which then has all of these particles that orbit around Jupiter and are trapped by the magnetic lines of the planet, which then create plasmoids with all sorts of materials on the inside. And unfortunately, currently, we don't even know how massive they are, we only have approximate estimates, or where they end up afterwards. We know very little about them. The approximate mass for a typical plasmoid around Jupiter, which usually occurs at least once a day, is anywhere from about 1 to maybe 10 million kilograms. With something very similar forming around Saturn as well, through the interaction of plasmoids with the emissions from, for example, Enceladus, that we've discovered emits quite a lot of various particles into the um, area around Saturn and essentially creates another ring as well. So all of these plasmoids seem to contain different composition, they also seem to be different in size and mass, and for the most part their frequency of how often they're produced depends on the strength of the magnetosphere and the actual amount of magnetic reconnections. But 34 years ago, as Voyager 2 was flying through the area where Uranus is located, 
it was able to detect another plasmoid, and completely by accident. Back then, because we didn't know plasmoids existed, we kind of ignored this data. But one of the recent scientific papers that you can find in the description below decided to investigate some of the magnetic phenomena we discovered around Uranus and also compare some of the previous discoveries with what we know about other planets. And to their surprise, when they tried to create the model for the magnetic field around Uranus, they discovered this unusual pattern that looks like a zigzag in the magnetic field that is actually a telltale sign for a relatively large plasmoid that the Voyager probe passed through on the way to other planets, on the way to uh, Neptune actually. And so this was actually a pretty incredible discovery because this is a data that's about 34 years old, but back then we had no idea that this was something important. Today we know that this is a plasmoid, which actually indicates, well, several major things. First of all, this shows us that Uranus is also losing a lot of mass through these plasmoids, and because its magnetic field and also its orbit is very different from anything else in the solar system, pointing at a different direction, around 60 degrees from the actual orbit itself, this may imply that Uranus could be losing a lot more mass a lot faster, even compared to planets like Jupiter and Saturn. And in terms of the actual size, it very likely resembled something like this, so it was a pretty large object, around 100,000 or so kilometers in radius. Although shape-wise, they believe it was very likely similar to a cylinder, not really a sphere. And in terms of composition, this was mostly uh, ionized hydrogen, which is of course what the planet itself is made from, so it wasn't really anything unusual like you would find around Saturn or Jupiter. But the most important implication here is that it seems that Uranus, over the period of few billion years, very likely lost a huge percentage of its atmosphere. As a matter of fact, it may have been 15 to 55 percent more massive in the past, which means that it may have been much larger as well. Now, right now, this is just a speculation. Obviously, we would need to go back to Uranus and study it in a little bit more detail to discover if any of this really makes sense. But considering we know so much about plasmoids from Jupiter and from Saturn, and considering we know that Uranus does seem to be a little bit odd when it comes to magnetosphere, and probably also when it comes to these plasmoids as well, I think it's fair to say that um, it's not a really far-fetched assumption that this planet used to be more massive and much larger when it was just created. And this is, in some sense, the nature of magnetosphere as well. It does protect planets from losing atmosphere, but at the same time, it also seems to cause planets to lose a lot of atmosphere. And modern studies suggest that this is exactly how Mars lost all of its atmosphere as well. It was very likely through the combination of being stripped by the sun itself and through magnetic reconnections that caused a lot of different plasmoids that eventually had Mars lose all of its atmosphere, turning the planet a lot less hospitable. And since today we know that the magnetosphere is essential for planets, and it also seems to help planets transform in a variety of ways, this of course creates a lot of questions and a lot of mysteries for us to try to study and try to understand. And this new discovery also gives us another reason to go back to Uranus and try to study it in a little bit more detail. Because for all we know, this could have been a much different planet in the past, possibly even a lot more massive than we imagine right now, and this could also explain a lot of other anomalies we're observing in the solar system. And just in general, studies like this do actually help us understand how these plasmoids affect and evolve various planets and their atmospheres. And more specifically, this is of course really important for our own planet Earth. Our planet depends on its magnetosphere, and it also creates these plasmoids. So understanding what happens to a lot of this material and where it ends up eventually is also really important for us. But when it comes to various exoplanets, we do need to understand how these plasmoids interact and evolve planets in general. Because we really want to find more planets similar to Earth, not similar to Mars. And we know that plasmoids played a really important role in turning Mars the way it is today. A not so habitable planet. A planet that we would actually need to terraform to make it habitable for human or any other life. But for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. You can check out the paper I mentioned in the description below, or you can read more about this from this link right here, the summary provided by NASA. Either way though, it's a really, really exciting discovery. It's kind of fun to hear about something new we discover in old data, something we didn't really know about. And it's also kind of fun to talk about planets we normally ignore or don't really talk about much. Unless, of course, it's some sort of a joke related to the name Uranus. Which is actually not a joke at all, because that's really how the name is pronounced. But anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's escape the rings of Uranus and go explore the rest of the solar system. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. 
subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it actually does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can support this channel by buying the beautiful wonderful person t-shirt and feel wonderful every day. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.